Hi everyone, Sandy here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the second video in a series of how to create A2 cards using Authentique's calendar collection. I have several pieces here already cut out. These are out of scraps because I have made some larger projects with this collection that I received from Country Craft Creations. And so this is uh, for making cards. We're going to make the A2 size, which is your four and a quarter by five and a half tall. I've already got a couple of my bases made. I'm going to show you how I do that. And um, first of all, I want to share with you the stamps that I'm going to be using. Um, if you watched the first video in this series, you know that I lost my Grateful stamp. Couldn't find it. We vacuumed the floor two or three times since I lost it. I thought it was gone. I looked, checked the trash and everything. But then one day I was picking up some things off the floor and there by the leg of the table was this stamp. So I did find it and I'm very grateful. All I can think is that the cats must have found it behind the table, batted it around and ended up right where I could find it. So that's that's a good thing that I found it. So these are all Echo Park. Uh, these are from Country Craft Creations. Check online to see if they're still available or if some different ones are available now. Uh, this one is Loving Expressions which is a great one with sentiments, lots of uh, great words, smiling, grateful, happy, home, have courage, uh, the word happy, goals, celebrate, so it covers a lot of options. Then I'm going to be using this one for the May cards. This is the Motherhood collection, so it's got some great Mother's Day type stamps and of course spring with the butterflies. And then I'm going to be using uh, Welcome Spring with these um, flowers and butterflies and the words for happy springs especially that one. I'm going to be using my Memento ink in black unless I've decided to use a different color. And I will be stamping with the Tim Holtz um, stamping platform. And you need to make sure that clear is up at the top if you're using clear acrylic stamps. Now I've already cut out my artisan cardstock. I'm using the linen color. And I cut out six pieces. I needed three sheets of the 12 by 12 paper. You need to cut it for each card. Uh, mine are, or in, are going to be opened from the bottom up. So I cut mine four and a quarter wide by 11 tall. And I'm going to show you real quick how to make a base without a scoreboard. Last time we used a scoreboard. This time I'm going to do it without. In case you don't have a scoreboard or you're somewhere where you don't have one or you don't want to get yours out. So you just take the ends and you're going to match them up really well. Take your time and line them up. Just press down by holding them here on the side and then use your bone folder to score that fold. And so you have a nicely folded card and you're ready to go. So I'm going to get all my things together. I do have my paper scraps um, already cut for my cards. We're going to work on April 1st. Uh, then we'll do May and June. These are scraps left over from a couple of larger projects with the Authentic 12 by 12 collection. Our first April card is going to be for Easter and it's going to be really simple but with lots of layers. So I've already cut all these out. Again, this base is opening at the bottom. So you have the fold at the top and the folded size is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is an A2 card. And then I cut my, let me get the ruler here or I can just use my mat down here. But my first mat is going to be this pink. I want to use the pink. So I've cut it four inches wide by five and a quarter. So that's a quarter inch smaller in both directions. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue, which is also from Country Craft Creations, and I'm just going to quickly put some glue on each layering piece. So you can put together a really simple, quick card for any occasion. So just center this top, side, and bottom. I'm going to take my Cricut spatula here and just make sure everything's down flat. The next layer measures three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So this is just a little bit smaller. Pay attention to the direction if you're using one with print so you want to make sure it goes the right direction. And yes it's on the back of this cut apart but I had several of these so I'm good with that. So we're just going to line this up right here. About an eighth of an inch border all the way around. And make sure that one's stuck down good. And then the image, this cut apart, uh, is 
now three and three quarters. So it's another eighth of an inch smaller by five. So that's going to go right on here. It's just going to give a little bit of blue around the edges. But I like to use layers on simple cards or actually any of my A2 cards because it gives it some depth even without adding a lot of thickness. So we're going to put this one right here. And finish it down. And you could just do that and have a, a cute card. But I took this little cut apart, says Some Bunny Loves You, and I matted it to some of the plaid from the collection. And I am just going to stick it down here, but I'm only going to put glue on the two ends and across the bottom. They kind of make a tuck spot. And this is going to kind of go right here. I'm going to go ahead and and center that the best I can. I brought that excess glue. There we go. Good thing about art glitter glue, if it oozes out and you wipe it up, it dries clear and it's not shiny. So I really love that. So then I took uh, one of the little tickets from the cut aparts, hop right up, basket of candy, five cents a piece. And I did make it a little shorter on each end and a little shorter here on the sides. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that in right there so it comes out. But then I want to dress it up a little bit. And I thought that I would put this bow on here. This is made out of um, kind of a grass green button string. I didn't have any pink or that color of blue. I guess I need to buy some. But you can buy button string from Country Craft Creations also. And I am just going to put a dot of glue right there. And this will hold it. You may have to hold it down for just a minute to get it to stay where you want. I'll trim this in just a little bit right here. A little shorter. Or you could tie little knots on the end. And let that dry. And so we have a really cute little Easter card. We've got the bunny rabbit back there and the butterflies for spring. So that is our first April card. Okay, so now we're ready to work on our April card, which I have cut all my pieces here. Some of them I've assembled like the tags and different things to speed up some time, but I'll share what I did. So for this one, I have this piece. Uh, you'll notice it has a little cut in it. That's a little pocket that I'm going to have, but I want to add to stamp Happy Spring on here. So I have my stamping platform and I am going to put this in here right here and I'm going to use the magnets to hold it down. It's real important that you use these so that you can reposition your uh, you can re-ink if you need more ink on your image that you're stamping. So that's real important. So let me pull this out. Make sure we don't lose this one right. Okay so Peel this back. I want happy spring. I haven't used this set yet, but it's really cute. Uh, the butterflies and flowers. So with the happy spring here, we're going to put it, uh, position it where I want it to be. Let's go over the butterfly, maybe just, maybe not. I think right in there. So I'm going to close this down and, and catch that stamp. And then I'll grab my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I'm just going to ink this up. Now we're going to stamp it down. And then see how that looks. And maybe we need just a little bit more. I want it a little bit darker. Just a little more ink. There we go. Okay, I like that. And I'm going to take these off, set this aside, and now I'm going to decide. I'm going to take clean this off. I use a baby wipe. I like to use free and clear fragrance free, free baby wipes to clean my stamp and my platform here. So most of the ink came off from the stamp, and then I make sure and put this up. 
right away so I don't lose it. And then on this tag here, I made this tag with the purple string, added this pink section here. So this is just a tag that I cut out of the uh, linen cardstock, the artisan cardstock, and it is two and a quarter wide by three and a quarter tall. Angle punch the corners, quarter inch rounded these, and then cut another one that's smaller out of pattern paper. So this one is like two by three. The same thing, angle cut and rounded, and then add this little square rectangle here in the pink that is one and a half by two and a quarter. So I have that and I want to stamp, so I'm going to see if I can do this without messing up, onto this image here. And I'm trying to decide do I want butterfly or flowers. I think I'm going to go with the butterfly. Let's pull that out and position it where we want. Right there. It would have been easier if I hadn't added the ribbon yet, the string, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm just going to pick it up, make sure this stays in place, and grab my ink. Now you could do it with a different color if you wanted to. Um, you could emboss it. I am not. I'm, I don't emboss a whole lot. I do have embossing stuff, but it's a matter of pulling it all out to use it. Okay, so that's going to need a little more ink. Kind of has a little texture I think on it on that butterfly. Let's see how that looks now. Oh that's better. Okay that's cute. So that's that tag for the card. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then put it out of the way. Which we may see this again. Um, of course we will see it again for the Mother's Day and probably maybe a Father's Day card or something. I don't know yet what we're going to do. So let me put this up right quick before we get started. Okay, so now let's put this card together. Different elements. Of course, I have the card base, which is a four and a quarter by five and a half tall. Looks like that. Oh, I did want to show you um, the last card. I didn't show you on camera. If you want to decorate the inside and you have extra paper, you can certainly do that. I added this piece of dotted paper inside and then another layer of the linen cardstock. It makes the back a little stronger and gives you a, just kind of decorates the inside. So that's something that you might want to consider doing on your cards. So with this one, I have a plaid background that I cut. Four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So this is going to go right here. So we have to center that or balance that. I have my art glitter glue. Now, if you prefer using tape runners or other adhesive for your cards, that's fine. I just happen to like the glue. It's quick and easy to me. Uh, more economical I think than a lot of different tapes but it's just a preference of what you like to work with the glue gives me a few seconds to slide things around and get it a little bit straighter than normal so burnish that down and then the next layer is going to be like a pocket so I need to lay these out to make sure I'm doing it the way I want to. These are about the same size. Let me double check. I'm going to trim off a little bit from this one check. 
one the same size. It was a scrap, and I hadn't even hadn't even looked at it to trim it down. So I'm just going to put glue on the ends and across one edge with the bottom. This is going to make it a pocket. Now I'm going to look. I want my. Yeah, I think that'll work okay. I was going to put some more glue to keep it from um, going too far in. I think this will work. So I'm going to try to center this as best I can right about there. Burnish those edges. And this one, I punched out this um, pink with this lacy border. And I'm going to trim this down a little bit because I don't want it covering up my pocket slot. I'm going to just trim that down. And I'm going to glue this to the top of this next piece. Should be about the right size. Okay. I had already cut a slit out of this with my cutter because I'm going to be inserting another tag like that. So before I do that, I cut this little tiny, tiny piece where I have the slit and I cut it out of one of the cut parts. It's just a little piece of trim. You could use maybe a piece of ribbon or some washi tape or whatever you might have to just kind of along the edge of that cut to kind of finish it off just a little bit, just like that. So kind of like that. And then we're going to put this I'm going to keep this more as a pocket even the whole piece in case I want to use that later. So just on the sides and across the bottom. Now this other one's going to be a little short piece. Where'd that go? There it is. So I want it to come in and stick out some. So I'm going to put my glue about here, about an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth maybe, up from the bottom. That will make my pocket short on the inside, but still a good size here on the front. Give me a good size layer for the card. And I do want to share that I am trying out different recording softwares, have a different camera, so if it may look a little bit different, uh, in the comments let me know if it's too dark or too pale, if the lighting's not good. It's hard for me to tell. Looking at a monitor, I think that it's pretty good but then I could be wrong about that so we want to make sure that we um, that I adjust it so if you can give me some comments so I stick that in like that and I'm going to finish that now this little tag was really really just a, a strip that was cut off so it was already cut the inner one is an inch wide by two and five eighths tall and then the bigger one becomes well it's two and five eighths so the inner one is two and five eighths and the outer one is two and three quarters and then the outer one side to side is an inch and an eighth just a little over an inch and sixteenth so it's not quite an eighth so just whatever the scrap is, then I cut around it. So I'm going to have to decide what I want to put up here. So I'm going to set this aside, leave it right there. And I, I cut out this cut apart. I think it's so pretty with the hat and the flowers for a spring photo. And then I matted it to um, linen cardstock. So that can just tuck in right about there. Because this we all know it's all going to come out. And then this tag in the next pocket behind it. So you can push it in further to mail it if you need to, or if you just want it to look pretty, you can kind of have it um, sticking out like that. 
So now I need to decide what I want to add to this little tag right here. So for this little tag, I found some pink seam binding ribbon, and this is from Country Craft Creations. I'm just going to kind of wrinkle it up a little bit. Sometimes I, if I want it a little wrinkled, more wrinkled, I will spritz some water on my fingers, not a whole lot, and just kind of squish it around. It doesn't get it real wet. That way I can go ahead and still use it without having to dry it. If it gets too wet, then I have to hit it with my heat gun. So I'm going to pull this down now. I'm going to take, fold it in half, take the folded in, and I'm going to stick it in through the hole of the tag, and then I'm going to open that loop and stick this both tails through. Like that. And then I'm going to pull it both ends and just kind of tighten that up. Now if you want to secure it you can loop it one more time into a knot. Like this and this is just a pretty tag and I'm going to let it fray out. I'm going to cut it at an angle on the end. And then stick it back in to the card pocket right here. And then I cut this piece of pretty, it's a kind of a sparkly rickrack. Cut it longer than the width of the card. And I'm just going to take some glue, art glitter glue is what I use. And put some glue on it. Not on the very ends because that's going to be cut away. I like to leave it long till it dries. And then I cut the excess from the ends off. I'll put it right here along the bottom. Excuse my phone. Someone is sending me a text. And I had forgotten and I left my phone um, turned up. So I put it on silent right now. So maybe it won't bother us again. So Art Glitter Glue holds this really well. As you can see. So you have your excess here. So now once it's dry, you just take your scissors. Make sure it is dry. And just trim it off on each side. Then, if you have some material on here that you think it may fray, open up your card so you don't get glue on the inside. And you can put just a little bit on the ends. Kind of rub it in. And that should help with any fraying. I know there's a fray check for that, but I use my art glitter glue for nearly everything for my flowers, my ribbons, my ceiling things, uh, strings. I don't like to have a whole lot of product that I have to, to dig through. So, let me pull this up this away some so it's not over her face. Crinkle it a little more. And there is a card with lots of layers, lots of interaction that is still flat enough to mail. So let's see what kind of scrap I've got that I can put on the inside. And I'll have more plaid. Hmm. Got my scraps in here. I think I'll use a piece of the plaid. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and cut what I need for that. And then I'll show you putting it in. So I have my papers cut for the inside. But I decided on this one where you write your message and sign your name. I want to add a stamp set of flowers. So from that same stamp collection, I selected these. And I'm just going to put them here on the corner. And I'm going to grab my ink. And let's stamp it down. Give it a little bit more. And 
And there it is. I like that. So let me clean up right quick. Always clean up after you stamp because you don't want to, um, you know, any ink to dry on your your platform. Set that aside and put this little stamp right back where I got it from. And there it is. Okay, so that's really cute addition. So this one is cut about four and a quarter, not four and a quarter, but four so I cut it a quarter down and this one is actually because it was uh, already I thought it was too too long I cut it down to just a little over five and a quarter so you open up your card and you could do this before you do the rest of it but I like to see what I have left over and kind of make it matchy matchy so I do it after I finish the front get your glue on there your adhesive and just Line this up. And then I cut out what I stamped on. This one is about three and a half wide by four inches. So you can just put this in the center. Or even, you don't even have to attach the whole thing. If you want to tuck something in there, I'm going to just put a line of glue right here at the top. A lot of cards do that sometimes, the ready-made cards you buy, where they're just attached at the top. So you could tuck a letter under there if you wanted to. And that's just like that, see? So there you go. There's the April card done. I've lost my other one. <laughs> It's here in this desk somewhere. I'll have pictures of all of it. So now we're ready to move on to May. So we're going to make a Mother's Day card. And we'll see what's on the papers to see what other card we might want to make. And again, this is even with the ribbon and the tags, it is still flat enough to go in, into an envelope for mailing. Now we're ready to work on our May cards. And the first one's going to be for Mother's Day. And I have these elements cut out. I have my base ready to go. The four and a quarter by five and a half and I even cut out for the inside and this is the square that I'm going to use to put uh, so that you can write the sentiment on or the message but I want to stamp some flowers on this so I'm going to open up my stamp platform put my magnets on and I'm going to do some coloring with Copics um, back in the day when I first got into uh, paper crafting beyond the 12 by 12 scrapbooks I um, made a lot of cards and I actually made cards for Operation Right Home and I love using Copic markers and I became cert certified several years ago probably been about I would guess about eight years ago so I became certified to teach and use these Copic markers I took a class over in Dallas and uh, learned how to use the Copic markers and, but I don't use them as much now so I kind of slacked or slacked off on on actually being able to color with them but I still like to do it and and I've learned different methods for myself that's not the traditional way as taught by Copic but it works for me and I'm going to color these with you today so I picked out this um, stamp acrylic stamp from the motherhood stamp set by Echo Park from Country Craft Creations. So it's a really pretty rose right here. I'm trying to learn to stay in the center of my work area here. <laughs> of course I don't have a lot of room. Next time I'm going to raise my camera up a little bit more. So we have it here. Now when you're coloring with the Copic markers and a lot of different alcohol ink markers, whatever kind you have, you might want to do watercoloring as well. Um, I use the Memento, Memento black tuxedo ink because it gives a really good image that you can see to color and it doesn't bleed with the alcohol markers so I'm going to go ahead and stamp this right here and that one stamp did it on that one so that's a good good stamping and again I need 
to clean it off and then put my stamp up. This is a really, really pretty stamp. If you want to start doing some coloring, this set is really great for coloring. And you got the butterflies and the different flowers, images that you could color. So it would be a good one to start off with. And, you know, get a few of the lighter colors of your markers or whatever kind you choose. You don't have to have the whole range. And you don't have to have real dark colors because I don't like to use really dark Copic colors. You're going to see this is a lighter green here. So I'll move this out of the way. Now, I normally like to color on top of another piece of paper. So I'm just going to cut me a scrap here of the Artisan because I have it handy. I'm going to lay my image here on top of it and check how we're looking in camera right here. Move this up a little bit. So I'm going to color my leaves first. and I'm using the brush tip. So I'm just going to color in here. These are so tiny. You can't do a lot of what they call shading. But I'm going to color them the base color first with the leaves here that I can determine are the leaves. So get all those colored. And some of the greenery around the flower there. These didn't get all the way to the end. And then if you want it to have a little shaded look, you just go back over it with the same color on the base of them and just put a little darker on the base of each, each leaf. It's very subtle. You can't really tell it at all. But that's really pretty there. And then some of the flowers. I'm using this paper as my kind of my guide. I don't have the exact same flowers. But I'm going to color, I think, this one a dark pink. I'm just going to color it in. And again, I'm coloring the whole flower with this one color. And then I'm going to come in and do a little darker at the base of the petal. Blend that in. And then, I think I want to make, there's a blue rose here. Because we have the blue there, so I'm just going to color this. A lot of people find coloring relaxing. I'm going to leave part of that white for that detail in there. I'm going to make it darker right here and some of these darker. Similar to the rose in that paper. I think I'm going to color both of these blue. And just try to stay within the line. And where you want it darker, just go back and forth. And blend that in. It'll just turn dark. Right there. I want that one a little darker. That is pretty. Such a pretty image. It's not my coloring that makes it pretty, but it's the image that's so pretty. So again, this is an Echo Park stamp set called Motherhood. And check for it online at countrycraftcreations.com. So now I'm going to take the pink, the lighter pink, and I'm going to color these little, little flowers right here. They're really easy to color. And I've got a little green there on a petal, and I just push it back with the pink. Fixes it right up. And 
trying to make it a little darker. I may use this color here just, just a little bit at the base where those dark lines are of the petals. It's kind of a dot of color there around them. And so that gives that that little color. Now I'm going to pause for just a second and find my yellow marker and I'll be right back on camera. Okay, I'm back with my yellow marker, Copic marker, and I'm just going to color this center right there just a little bit. So I'm going to look them over again, see if there's any white spots that maybe I need to touch up, especially on my leaves. They're so tiny. Add a little darker to some of them on the very bottom. And then, let's see the blue. Blue roses are unusual, aren't they? I'm going to color this right here darker. Kind of right there under the shade of that one. Okay, I like those. Those are, I think, pretty. I'm going to hold it up. Kind of let you see if you can see in the light or not. I don't know how light it is, but that's going to go on the inside of my card. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and glue that. I think that's the right one. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's going to go to the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. On the inside my for my card and then we're going to go ahead and assemble the card let me move my markers out of the way okay so let's take our it didn't bleed through on that one at all so i can use that again so let's take our base which is your four and a quarter by five and a half again mine open at the top and my different layers that i have cut so i want to use this floral piece and this one is, I lost some of my light. Let me bring my light back up. Okay. This one is cut to four wide, by five and a quarter tall. So this is my first layer on this card. This Mother's Day card. here get on as straight as possible then my next layer is going to be this pink right in here kind of center that this is kind of a ledger look so I'm trying to center that top to bottom. Then I have this really cute cut apart. I trimmed it down quite a bit to get it to fit. It says to mom with love. Isn't that cute? And so that's going to go at an angle right there. Get the glue. And I did mat this to uh, the linen cardstock. So it would have a mat around it. So I'll give you the measurements of both just a second. From that corner to that. I'm going to offset it up there at the top just a little bit. So this layer, the linen color layer for this one is just a little over three and three eighths. No, just a little over, yes, three and three eighths. And then this way it is about three and five eighths. So the image is three and a quarter by just under three and a half. So that turns out really pretty. And this pink one, did I give you the measurements for this pink one? It was four inches by three and three quarters. So there's those layers. Then we have, this is out of the cut aparts. Happy Mother's Day. And then I have this little pink piece that uh, was a scrap. So I think, 
I think I want to lay that here. And then put Happy Mother's Day on top of that. So I'm going to put Happy Mother's Day on top of the pink. And just cut out the um, sentiment from the cut aparts and then matted it to um, the linen cardstock. And then I cut this one to fit over it. So it does extend just a little bit on the ends like that. And I'm thinking I might use some foam dots. So let me grab those right quick. I'll put three. So let's turn it over. We'll put one, two, three foam dots. Foam dots squish down enough. They're not real thick that they can go in an envelope for mailing. So that's no problem. You just wouldn't want to do layers on top of each layer, layer after layer, because then that would be way too thick. Quarter inch thickness is about the rule for um, thickness of a card, a mail. So that one's going to go right there. So that's pretty much the maximum of the thickness right there. So let's add our inside piece. And then I'm going to look at maybe putting a little bow on it or ribbon. We're going to open this up. This one's already made. Stick this down right here. I really enjoy making cards out of scraps. So you should, if you like to make cards or you like to send cards, um, keep your scraps or a lot of your scraps, your pattern papers for your cards. You can cut them down to sizes that will work for cards. So, you know, you don't have to use up a lot of room. But anyway, there's that one on the inside. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to pause again. And I'm going to find either some seam binding ribbon that I think would work pretty with this or some button string. So I'll be right back. I really like this pink seam binding ribbon that I used earlier on my one of my April cards. It just it looks great with these colors of this collection. So I'm going to use it again on this card and I'm just trying to decide where I want to put it. I think I'm going to put it at the top and then I found this really pretty sparkly ribbon and mustache. And I may or may not use it. It's real pretty, but it's one-sided. So we're going to see. If I don't like it, I will snip it out. Okay, so I'm going to lay these out. These I cut a piece about 21 inches long. No particular reason. I'm going to open this up. Now I'm not going to attach these down. They're just going to be tied. So I'm going to do it this way. Make sure I've got it half and half. Okay. So I'm going to lay it here. I'm going to fold my card up. Try to keep these as straight as possible. Again, like I said, I'm not attaching them down. I'm just laying them here and I'm going to bring them around and tie them. Okay, like this. And I'm just going to tie them at the very top. I don't want to cover up anything of the card. And like I said, this sparkly one, we're going to see how it looks. So bring this here so we got the sparkly facing up and make a knot. Make sure you get the tail of both ribbons in there. We're just going to pull it tight. Now this kind of knot will stay fairly flat. It's not any thicker than the cinnamon over here, the Happy Mother's Day. And it's just kind of like this. So now we're going to trim this ribbon. And I do like that sparkly. I think it's going to work just fine. So you want to trim your ribbon off a little bit. Oops. And there it is. So you can adjust it a little bit if you need to, but it turned out really, really cute, really pretty. This one's a little jaggedy here, so I'm going to cut it again for now. And then pull it around some and play with it and get it to lay down a little flatter. So there is uh, the first card for May. This is a Mother's Day card. And it turned out really pretty. So now we're ready for the second one. So let me stand this aside. Clean this off and grab the second one, which is going to be primarily, let's see, an anything card. 
so like if you need a sympathy card or something like that so it may not necessarily have a verse or sentiment on it and so this one again I've already cut the papers for the inside lay that aside this is a beautiful cut apart of the bird and let me look at our stamps here I don't know if you wanted to make it a encouragement card this you are amazing is nice Let's see what else we got welcome spring follow your heart such a good day hello sunshine grateful we never did use grateful did we <laughs> uh, love you most favorite happy celebrate goals best friend grateful and blessed cherish there's nothing here for like a sentiment I mean a um, sympathy but the word remember so we're going to put this together and then I'll decide okay so we've got the card base which is your four and a quarter by five and a half my orientation is open at the top and I cut the base piece right here and I cut it to four by five and a quarter and it's going to go like that make sure your design is going the way you want it add your glue and yes it's you losing the cut apart but sometimes you just have to do that to get your different patterns because I thought this was really pretty uh, for a card this pattern so I'm going to line this up oops I'm getting kind of crooked here okay that's better okay burn it step down now I had this scrap left over and it is two and a half tall and I cut it down to four to go across this but I want it since I don't have a didn't want to use up a full piece I'm gonna cut this in half kind of in half I'm kind of guessing here so that I can put part of it at the top and part of it at the bottom so it looks like a solid piece and we're going to have to position this and see where it goes. So this goes here. So I'm going to glue that right there. Where's my pencil? I'm going to put a little tick mark right there. This is for the bottom. So get your glue. So this is a way to use up scraps that maybe aren't big enough for the area that you want to cover or for the layer, but you can build your layer. So make sure you get it on straight. And I'm going to erase the tick mark. And then I'm going to lay this on here again. And I want it to go about that much. A little more right there. So we'll take this one and slide it under there. And you can make it a different width if you want to. So I'm going to put a tick mark for the bottom of this one right here. And we're going to glue this one down. next this cut apart three by four cut apart it's going to fit right there it's going to be pocket now I want this to go in it like that so I'm going to flip this over so I want to add glue right about here so it looks like about an inch from the bottom for this one you base it on size of your tag this tag is from the cut aparts but I did trim it down some and then I matted it to the pink 
So now I'm going to put my pocket here. Make sure it's straight. Burnish the sides and the bottom. I love this bird on the flower image. It is so pretty. So this is going to go right in there. Now this is where we'll probably stamp something. Or I could have put the sentiment here. Let me see. I think I may put it on this. So let's go ahead and put this in. I'm not going to stamp on it. So open this up. This is from Scraps. So this one is four, five and an eighth. I think I put glue on the wrong side. I wanted it the other way, but this is fine. These colors are right. So I did a little oops there. I uh, stuck down the wrong side, but this will work just fine. Put me a plaid on that side, so maybe that looks better anyway. It does. That's the side I wanted. <laughs> this piece here is, again, scraps. So I just pick it up three and a half by four and a quarter. So whatever you might have, and you just glue that down. I'm just going to glue on the top edge. Just because it'll work fine and stick it down. Right there. Okay, so now all I need to do is figure out what I want to stamp on that and get a ribbon for that. And then we'll, this card will be done and it's very, very flat. But I like the simplicity of it, so I'm going to pause for just a minute and grab what I need for this. I've decided to stamp right here. It would have been easier if I had done it before I attached all this together, but I'm pretty sure that we can still do it with, our, with my platform. So I've turned it sideways to maybe make it easier to see. And I'm going to be more careful with my ink also. I don't want anything getting on it. So I've got this laying down. I chose this stamp from the Echo Park Loving Expression set. I chose the one that says, well, I don't remember what it says, Follow Your Heart. There it is, up here at the top. Follow your heart. I think it's really pretty. An encouragement type um, stamp. And I'm going to line this up with the top of this so to make sure that it's straight. That's the hardest part is getting something straight. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Okay. And this time I'm going to use a coloring. We're going to see how that goes. If it don't like it, then I can do black over it, I think. So this is some of my ink that I had from when I was a designer for Graphic 45. This is, uh, they used to have a ink line. They were real pastel. This was by Colorbox called Graphic 45 Decades. It matches their papers, but it, it's a light color, a light vintage looking color. I'm going to wipe the ink off that I got on the side here. So we're going to bring this down. Hope it works. Oh, that's pretty. I don't even know if we need any more ink or not. Maybe a little bit. Just a little more. Fill in some of the spots. And I just wanted to show you what colored ink on a card can look like. And it makes it look like it actually was printed on there, pretty much. So that's really pretty. I'll go ahead and clean this up. And then we'll do the tag. And our last May card will be done. Set this back where it belongs. Because I like these stamps and I don't want to lose one again. And have to wait, what, six weeks before I ever found it again? Okay, so there's that one. So isn't that pretty? And you could just leave it like that, but I want to tuck this tag in here. And you could write a message on that too if you wanted to. And again, this pink is just perfect. I'm going to spritz a little bit in my hand and crinkle it up some.
I'm going to open this up. A tag. This is a little longer piece, but I thought I'd go ahead and use it. So again, you bring it through, you open your loop. Open your loop up. Stick the tails in. And then just pull to tighten it. And when it dries, the color will be more natural of what it's supposed to be. It's kind of a little darker right now. Because the ribbon's wet. Okay. So that just sticks inside there. And you can pull this and if you need to tie it and more of a knot, go ahead and do that. I like to tie mine sometimes, make sure they don't come undone and it shortens them up some if I need them shorter. So there, that can be added into an uh, envelope for mailing. So that is the May cards. Oh, that's not, that's April. <laughs> that's the one I was missing before, May cards. Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day, and Follow Your Heart. Loving this paper. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out and ordered on countrycraftcreations.com, I hope you do so. It's going to be great for the whole year. I did a calendar project, calendar book, and a box to store it in. And um, it turned out to be a lot of fun. And I have a regular 12 by 12 calendars series that I'm doing with this paper collection as well. Okay, so let me get ready for... June cards and we'll get working on those. Now we're ready to start on our two June cards and we're going to make a wedding card and a Father's Day card. Uh, let's start with the Father's Day one first. It's really simple because I want to keep it uh, clean lines for make it more masculine. Not a lot of frou-frou on this one so I've got different layers though to bring out some color. So let me set this aside again. The base is for an A2 four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall when it's folded, mine's folded at the top. I'm sure you're sick, sick of hearing me say that, but I'm going to make sure in case someone jumps in kind of in the middle of the video that they know what I'm doing. So I have the base and I'm going to use this blue check from the collection and I cut mine to four inches by five and it's just a little, it was a scrap, so it's just about five and one sixteenth. So it's going to go right there. So let me get the art glitter glue and get it going. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. And I've said earlier, you can use any adhesive that you like to use on your cards. I just like glue because it can gives me some room to move it around. You know what? I may have the wrong... Let's see here. Yeah, I have the wrong one. Oops. Four inches. Bye. Five and a quarter, that's what it's supposed to be for this first layer on the front. The other piece goes on the inside and it'll be okay. I'll be able to use it. I'll just go ahead and grab it real quick after I stick this one down and we'll go ahead and put it in to the card. So let me get this one on because I'm using the same uh, pattern on the inside as I am on the outside. So let's open this up real quick. We still got some glue, tacky glue. We'll just add some more on this one where it dried. And we're going to be fine. So I'll repeat the measurements once I get this stuck down. It was four inches wide. Let's see if this is better in here. Okay, four inches wide by five and one sixteenth tall for the liner on the inside. And then I have a piece of the uh, linen cardstock, the artisan, three and a quarter wide by three and a half. This is just a scrap laying here on the table in where I've been cutting. So utilize what you have left over to finish different areas of your card. So that's the inside. Get back to this. Okay. So here I have an image with the father reading um, a book to his children. I'm going to use that and I want to uh, stamp something right here. Now the cardstock mat behind the image is three and a half by 
three and seven eighths and then you cut your image to fit so it has about an eighth of an inch all the way around so my image is three and a quarter by three and three quarters so that's the image so let me grab my platform for stamping okay we're going to turn it sideways again let me look at my screen make sure i'm still in screen there for that and i'm going to turn it sideways and put this in here and then i'm going to pick out the stamp i want to use i'm going to stamp right in there so i was looking at it earlier uh, I like the You Are Amazing. Now this is on the Motherhood stamp, but this will work for Father's Day. So I like the You Are Amazing. And again, these stamps were from Country Craft Creations. So if you want to check for those, there are they are by Echo Park. So I'm gonna they stick to my fingers, and I want to get it kind of straight right there. Then go ahead and <clears throat> attach it down by picking it up. And I'm going to try, I think, a gray color. And I'm going to use this on this card and on the wedding card. And it is uh, Prima's Color Philosophy Foggy Nights, which is a gray. I didn't want black, black, but I wanted a gray. And this one has not been opened. So I'm going to pause and open this. So I can't believe I haven't used this yet. So this is a new color. I don't even know how dark or gray or light. But I think... I think it's going to look good on that. So, inked it up. Yes, and just a little bit. So, it's not as stark black as the other ink. Um, I don't know how permanent fast drying this is, so I'm not going to touch it which, of the image for that. So, there it goes. A little bit lighter than the, the black black. I was hoping for a little more gray, but that will still work. So let's move this out of the side. Oh. Gotta clean it out first. Don't forget to clean your stamp and put it away. Okay. Put this away and put my stamp back in the package. You are amazing. There you go. Okay. Now we're ready to put this card together. Like I said, it's going to be really easy with lots of layers. So I had some scraps. I wanted the yellow. I wanted to pull that up. And this one is the four inches wide. And this scrap ended up being about one and a half. So I'm going to put it just about right here. It doesn't quite go all the way across because it was a scrap, but it's close enough. Stick this down here, just make sure it's even on both sides. And I'm trying to center it the best, the best I can right there. Then I have a strip of the dots, which is same width, but about seven eighths tall. So cards like this with layers like this are really quick and easy to put together. And then I want to pull in that gray color. So I had this little strip left over. Same width and it's about I don't know, it's whatever it ended up being on the scrap. Let's see. A quarter of an inch wide. So there's that layer. And then I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to use those foam dots kind of give it some dimension. Not a whole lot, so that it will still go in an envelope for mailing. One on each corner, and then one in the middle. Okay. Get these backs off. This one will be done quick. And easy and I'm not adding any ribbon or bows or anything like that. I want to keep it really clean since it's for a man. You are amazing. So I'm just going to position this right over that. So it just gives a little bit of color here on the sides and like that. So that turned out pretty good I think for Father's Day card. So next we're ready to work on the 
um, wedding one. So let's get this cleaned up just a little bit. For this wedding card, I am going to go with the grays to kind of keep it neutral, a little more elegant. I didn't want all the different colors that might not pertain to whoever's wedding card this will be. So with the A2 size, I have cut my mat out of this gray stripe like this, and it is four wide, the five and a quarter tall. So I'm just going to put the glue on this base piece or the base layer. I'm going to stick it down. Oops. It'll prick it here. Let's straighten it up. And that's a good thing about glue. If you haven't um, completely let it dry, you can straighten it up some. Which I am doing right now. So that's better. Now I'm going to brush it really well and let it dry. <clears throat> so I have this other piece of gray, which is more like a chevron type, that I cut. And it is uh, matted to the Linen Color Artisan uh, cardstock. And so the base, the mat, is three and an eighth by three and, a, three and an eighth. And then the inner part is just a little bit. It's about three three by three. So I'm going to put this up more towards the top. Okay. Then the next is going to be my image. I didn't mat it to anything, but it's going to be a pocket. So I want it up higher. So just on the two ends, and across the bottom, and let me check real quick with my tag. How much do I want a bit to stick out? I like that. So I'm going to put glue across here. So about an inch from the bottom of glue. Okay. Stick that down right over this. So kind of up a little bit. But and it fits side to side. So it's about four inches wide. So this tag is from the cut apart. So I just cut a mat around it. And I'm going to be adding some ribbon to that. So that's going to go in like that. Then I have the sentiment here out of the cut apart. Matted it to of the linen cardstock. So the mat is Three and one sixteenth by two and an eighth, and the trim down the cut apart to about two and seven eighths, just under two. So this is going to go right here. So go ahead and put the solid down all the way. Okay, except for some adding some ribbon to that tag, the front stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up for my inside. Now, I didn't have a big enough piece of the gray to do the solid, so I'm going to piece this. This piece here is four wide by three and a half. This is going to go on the bottom for the inside of the car. Okay, and then this piece I cut, so it's going to be right up at the top, so it is four by one and a half. And you know, and I forgot to stamp on the front, so I think that I was going to stamp. I'm going to have to look that over again. So just line this up. 
has this space here and then this is our bigger um, greeting three and a half by four and a half yes this is where we would write our message sign our names and this is just gonna fit right over that this is kind of like a puzzle look I guess you would say but anyway like that so yes I was going to stamp in this same gray so here I've done it again I've already got the card assembled but that's okay we're good to go we're going to take our platform because I've done it before I know it will work and the card yeah. probably could use more magnets so I want it to go right there and I was looking at this is this one the next one let me see what we've got yes the love okay here love all your heart I don't think I like the love let's fill that off and it's going to go about right here. Just, I think I'm trying to figure out if I have a silvery gray color in the ink. I don't know if I do. I'm going to pause and look. Then we also have this heart. So I'm going to put it right in there. <clears throat> Let me get these positioned where I want them and then I will pause and go check my ink before I actually ink it. I need a magnet right there. Okay. Let's line this up straight. this down okay so I'm gonna pause and look for a different watercolor so I pulled out truffle in the color philosophy I'm hoping that it's a little bit lighter than the foggy nights I looked to see if I had any silver embossing but I did not have any that I thought would look right so I don't want to do that I was going to show you how to emboss so maybe next time Let's see how that does. Yeah, I like that because that's that is a lot lighter. And I'm gonna put some more ink to even it out. Okay, and I'm gonna do just a little bit more to even it out. really any darker but I think it'll just even that color out fill that in there that's really pretty I like that okay so if you wanted it to be a little shinier or more silvery you could use a silver embossing but like I said I don't have any that I liked in my stash they were more glittery I thought maybe for Christmas I didn't want to risk putting it on this this one at this time so there's that card and I need to find what I want to put in the tag and then that one will be done so let me pause that and I'll get my ribbon okay so I pulled out some white seam binding ribbon and I crinkled it up I'm going to use the white because it's more white for the mats and then I also am looking at this kind of off-white sparkly and the sparkly brick rack and I'm going to see how they look in with this white if we can we can accomplish this. Let's see how I want to do this. I'm going to fold this in half and push the fold in. Bring it up and take my loop and open that up. So definitely I want the white one in there. I just have to decide on these others how I want to put them in because I don't think they would do the loop really well. I'm not sure. But if I have to cut them out. So sometimes 
I take things and I just tie around the main one. Like this, let's see how that looks. We can get that ribbon to stay with the sparkly out. Kind of like that. And then let's see with the rip rack. We'll do it sparkly on both sides. we're going to trim these all down and still keep it kind of flat for mailing. So I'm just going to angle cut these. Okay. So this goes in here, and I like how that turned out, so you can move that around to go in your envelope like that, and you just have some pretty sparkly there part. And so we are done with this quarters of this series cards. The next ones will be for July, August, and September, and I hope to have those ready in early June. So um, let me pull all my cards together so you can see them all at once. <clears throat> and then I'll take some pretty pictures of them to share so that you can see them all. So here is June. We have Father's Day and wedding. And then May, we have Mother's Day. And in all occasion, follow your heart. And then for April, we did a spring card and Easter. So can we see all those together like that? So that's the cards. I want to thank you so much for following along with this series of creating A2 cards that are flat enough to go in an envelope for mailing in the USA. These are all designed for country craft creations using Authentique's calendar collection in the 12 by 12 size. So those are still available in the online store at countrycraftcreations.com. So check that out if you don't have them already. If you've made big projects with this collection or any other collection, you can certainly use your scraps to create some cards. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure and subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. And click on that bell so you know when my next video is uploaded. Thanks. Bye-bye.